Readers, and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon, and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. And today we're talking about The Girls Are All So Nice Here by Lori Elizabeth Flynn. Let me just start by saying I started this book yesterday and I finished it this morning. <laughs> it's one of those books that you cannot put down. I could not stop reading this. And when I wasn't reading it, I was thinking about it. It's a roller coaster ride of a story, you guys. Um, and uh, spoiler alert, the girls are not very nice here. So I don't even know where to begin. We'll just start by saying this book takes place in two separate time periods. It takes place now and then, going back and forth, chapter to chapter. So now is, um, you know, present day, and a girl named, <laughs> I was like, why can't I think of her name? Ambrosia, uh, Am for short, is getting ready to reluctantly go to her 10 year college reunion. Um, she doesn't really want to go. She certainly doesn't want her husband going with her, but she doesn't know how to get out of it and she doesn't know how to keep him from going. The then is her college days. She went to a college, um, I don't know where, I think it's somewhere on the east coast of America. And it, things get really dark. Things get really dark and a little disturbing. The thing that I really loved about this is at first you're not sure who the mean girls are because you know the girls are all so nice here. They're not. There are very mean girls. And as the story continues a little bit, you learn that the main character was one of them. It's told from the point of view of this really terrible bully who now 10 years later has to go back to the college to sort of deal with the things that she did when she was younger and terrible, just awful. The things that her and this other girl, whose name is Sully, it's the two of them, they're the mean girls, the things that they do are just unspeakable. And since the story is told from her, her point of view, from Amp's point of view, even though you know you're like, oh, she's bad. You feel for her a little bit because she certainly wasn't the ringleader, the other girl was, but at the same time, she's just terrible. And I feel like ringleader or no, if someone can convince you to do these terrible things to other people, it was in you to begin with. You know, it might not have been your biggest personality trait, but I feel like it was in there. I don't, I can't imagine even when I was, in college age, anyone being able to convince me to do the things that Sally convinces Amp to do. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I can't imagine it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this, this book was wild. So like I said, it goes back and forth between the two time periods. In the present, um, Amp starts getting notes and emails and just really um, sinister messages that say things like, I know what you did that night. I know what happened. You're going to pay like things, sort of things like that, really just ominous messages. And um, yeah, from there, it just, we start seeing her getting ready for the reunion and then eventually going to it with her husband, Adrian. And then we keep going back to the past where it's just this build up and build up and build up. And you're wondering what's going to happen. What did they do? And when you find out, yikes, it's so bad. But like I said, I couldn't put it down. It was a very engaging read. It was really well written. The way Lori worded some things, I'd stop because as a writer, I'm always so impressed when someone can weave words together in a way that's just so beautiful. And you're like, how did your brain think of that? I love that. Um, and I, I definitely had that feeling multiple times while reading this book. Plus, she's Canadian, Lori. That's great. I, I always love when I pick up a book. I didn't know she was Canadian before I picked it up. I had just seen it at Costco and I saw 
Um, it was when I was in the city for my mom's surgery last month. Um, I went to Costco and I saw two other girls ahead of me pick up this book and I was like, okay, all right. I see you, I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> I'm so glad I did, it was such a fun read. So I'm gonna leave it there for anyone who doesn't want any spoilers of what this girl did, <laughs> or these two girls did. So if you don't want spoilers, definitely click away now. But if you want to know what happened, stay tuned and I will tell you. So, okay, now that they're gone, let's continue. Um, so Amp moves into, it's a freshman year of college, she moves into the dorms with this girl named Flora. Flora outwardly seems to have it all. She seems very perfect. She's very nice. She's very sweet. She wants to be friends with Am. She makes an effort. She has a long distance boyfriend named Kevin who she's just crazy about. And she's just very sweet. And there's something about that sweetness that puts Am on edge. She doesn't trust it. She thinks it's fake. But as the time goes by, she can't find any proof that it's fake. <laughs> like everyone's like, oh yeah, Flora's great. And she loves you. She speaks so highly of you. Um, until Sully, the other girl, the kind of ringleader of the mean girls, she starts planting um, seeds of doubt into Am's mind. She's like, oh, I heard Flora talking about you. But you get the sense that this girl's just the worst and so she's probably making it up. One day, Am is outside and she runs into this guy. Well, first of all, Am and Sully are drunk all the time and they're sleeping with every guy they see on campus. They just, they don't care. They're out, they're, does he have a girlfriend? I don't care. Like there's just, there's no regard for anybody's feelings but themselves. They're incredibly, incredibly selfish. But eventually Am kind of gets the feeling that she wants something more and one day she runs into this boy outside on campus. They literally bump into each other. It's like a meet in a movie. You know, she drops her books, he picks it up. And they get to talking. He gives her his email address. He's like, you know, they bond over this book she has. It's his favorite author. He gives her his email, says, get in touch. Off he goes. Amp goes back to her dorm room. She goes in and there's the guy sitting on Flora's bed because this is Kevin, her long distance boyfriend who's come to town to see her. Awkward. And from there, Amp kind of becomes obsessed with Kevin. She becomes obsessed with wanting what Flora has. It's a real like sort of single white female. Remember that movie from like the 90s? It's that kind of vibe a little bit. She wants what Flora has. She doesn't think Flora deserves him, even though there's no reason to think that. Again, aside from her own selfishness, but she doesn't care. She starts emailing him, um, trying to break him and Flora up in really subtle ways, trying to get him to fall in love with her so that he'll break up with Flora. Um, eventually, he tells her about a frat party that's happening on his campus where he goes to school and she kind of just says like, she's talking to Sully, the other girl, and she's like, I should go and surprise him and he'll be so excited. Um, you know, Flora would never do this and I'm gonna sleep with him. So she, she does that. She goes there, she surprises him. He's very surprised, but he doesn't sleep with her. He's like, listen, I don't cheat. I don't cheat. I don't want to cheat. Um, but, you know, let me work this out. I gotta figure things out and, you know, we'll see what happens down the road. From there, Amb begins to plant the seeds of doubt in Kevin's mind that Flora's cheating. And Sully's like, we can make her cheat. So what they do to this poor girl is, she's already feeling down because Kevin's acting distant. So they take her to a Halloween party, they get her exceptionally drunk. Um, Cause this girl doesn't drink, you know, she's just one of those girls that's very serious, very studious. And that's not what she likes to do every night like Amb and Sully do. So they get her exceptionally drunk. They're at this party, um, Amb is hooking up with this one guy and she sees, she sees that Flora is about to hook up with this other guy and at the time she takes a picture so she has proof to show Kevin, even though this is after the fact. And we later learn that that night Flora had been 
assaulted. She hadn't wanted to be with that guy. Um, but she never really talks about it, but she becomes a completely different person afterwards, withdrawn, crying all the time. And she later even finds out that she's pregnant. So from there, it's just a lot of chaos. Amp eventually tells Kevin that she has proof that Flora cheated, so she tells Kevin to come here and break up with her and confront her. And so of course, this is all orchestrated by Am and Sully, all of it, all of it. Kevin and Flora were fine. Now, Flora's been assaulted. Am has kissed Kevin many times. Excuse me, Tracy. <laughs> um, um, Flora's pregnant from her assault. And all of this is because of these two girls. So Kevin comes down and Flora gets intoxicated again and she's kind of making a fool of herself at the party. She eventually storms away. Kevin, who's now just like, he can't believe what he's seeing. This is a completely different person. Amp takes that opportunity to lure him into the bathroom and sleep with him, which she does. Um, we lose track of Sully for a while. We don't know where she went. And then we learn that when, um, before, we learned that before Amp went into the bathroom with him, Sully had stolen his phone and they were texting Flora as though they were Kevin and saying really, really terrible things to her. Eventually she texts Kevin and says, "If please come here. I'm so confused. I'm so hurt. Please come here. I think I'm going to do something. I think I'm going to hurt myself. And Kevin says, well, Amp, as Kevin texts Flora and says, then do it. And then, so Anne goes and finds Kevin, takes him to the bathroom, sleeps with him. Then Kevin later goes back to the dorm room and finds that Flora has in fact hurt herself to the point that she is, she's dead now. <laughs> um, and we're described the scene a little bit. Apparently it was a very, very messy scene. Um, and, but Kevin can't quite buy it. Because he's like, nope, Flora would have left a note. I know she would have. I know she would have. And later Flora's sister, Poppy, she's also like, nope, she would have left a note. And so that's kind of the end of the then chapters. In the now chapters, we see Amp and her husband Adrian go to the reunion. It's awkward. It's terrible. <laughs> Um, everyone is, because after what happened to Flora, Kevin was blamed because the texts got out, even though he's like, I didn't write those texts. Nobody believes him. And, um, it was just a mess. So now we're in the present and eventually that comes to a head when we find out that the person who had been sending the notes and the cryptic messages was Poppy. Flora's sister because she never ever ever believed that Poppy did it ever so um, we find out that like Poppy's on a mission to punish everybody that had anything to do with her sister's death right towards the end of the book we learn that she goes and finds Kevin who's staying in a nearby hotel because of course he couldn't show his face on campus even though he never went there he just you know he's everyone thinks he he was directly involved in Flora's death Poppy goes and finds him at the hotel and she makes it look like he took too many pills and he never woke up then she goes to the hotel or to the dorm room where um, Sully and Ambar and she has this whole speech and she's got a knife and Am notices that the knife is from her own kitchen so Poppy had broken in took the knife shows up at the reunion and then she stabs Sully because she knows she knows and we do get the the full info of what happened she knew in her whole her heart the whole time and she's finally vindicated that Sully actually went and was the one to end Flora. Flora didn't do it herself. Sully did it, making it look like Flora had done it. So Poppy stabs her. Then she, in a real quick instant, turns the knife and gives it to Amp. 
and Amp, kind of in stunned shock, takes it. And then Poppy starts screaming until people come in. And then um, Poppy's like, oh my god. Um, you know, makes it look like Ambrose, Amp had done it. And as it's happening, for a brief moment, I'm like, oh, oh no, poor Amp. But then you're like, wait a minute, no. <laughs> we only feel that poor Amp because she's the main character. But she's not. She's bad, girl. She's very bad. So I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. So then the final chapter we get is actually from Poppy's point of view. We don't know at first whose point of view it is. Um, so we get it. So the chapter starts and it's, um, we think Amb at first and she's visiting Adrian, her husband who they had, they had broken up because during the weekend at the reunion, Adrian found out he knew nothing about her at all. <laughs> Um, he found out a lot of things and a lot of disturbing things. So uh, understandably, he's disturbed and doesn't really want anything to do with her. So there's this woman and she's in the apartment with Adrian. And, um, you know, she's getting close to him and we don't know who it is. And then we learn it's Poppy. And then we learn that Amb is in is serving life in prison for... Um, what she did to Sully and what she did to Flora, but we know that it was we know that it was Sully that did it to Flora. Even but Poppy knew that Amp was involved. Like she she thought she kind of came to the realization. Okay, Amp was the words, and Sully was the violence. She says so. I'll take equal from Sully. She took Flora. I'll take Sully, and you will suffer you will suffer long term in jail for what you did so and that's the end and i was like wow <laughs> i said it was a real roller coaster of a story i couldn't put it down i really enjoyed it um and yeah if you've read it let me know what you thought down in the comments down below if you haven't let me know how the story sounds to you a lot it's a lot to unpack I know but yeah if if you love a good fast paced thriller that keeps you guessing definitely pick it up because of course I left a bunch of stuff out because there's no way I could tell you every single thing that happened anyway thanks so much for watching you guys I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again real soon bye